Good morning. Uh, I just wanted to give a little bit of an encouraging um, message out to transgender people um, from a Christian perspective. So I, I know it's going to be a little bit different, but you know, I, really, if you're transgender, you really got the short end of the stick. There's there's really no no shortcutting that. You were largely ignored for year upon year, and now. People are aware of your presence, but they're not actually willing to help you. They just still are trying to push you into a mold. See, in the in, in the past, you got pushed to the background. Now, you're getting pushed to the forefront or whatever you want to say there. A, you're expected to get sex changes. B, if you don't know quite how to fill, you know, you've got very few people who actually help you. You've got a lot of people who are just going to say, you know, hey, you know, you just do you. Well, I mean, I guess they mean well, but where does that leave you? See what I mean? It, it seems like both things are kind of not really helpful. To ignore somebody in total, well, that's obviously not helpful. I mean, I don't have to elaborate there. But then to see somebody in a problem and then say, hey, I see you over there. That really doesn't help either. I mean, let's think about, you know, the, the Jews that were in, in gas chambers. Let's say if people said, okay, well, before I didn't know that there were, uh, you know, Jewish people in, uh, in gas chambers. Well, now I do. So, hey, you know, you can do it in that gas chamber. Well, that's not really going to help much, you know. And I, I'm not talking about just in the world. I'm talking about in the church, too. Um, sometimes we're just kind of expected to be something that, that maybe we're not. And it's hard to deal with that. You know, like, for instance, uh, I'm not the most rugged of men. <laughs> and, uh, well, a lot of more manly men than me, uh, you know, kind of expect me to be like them. And I'm, I'm not. I mean, I'm more of a thinker, not much of a, uh, you know, fighter and that kind of stuff. I just, I'm, that's just not me. And I think that sometimes we just don't really know how to turn because people like to put things in boxes and then they don't really like to, they, they just like things to be simple and, and, and to be how they want it to be, you know, they just like transgender. I mean, we can all know that, you know, it's more complicated than that, but people like things in boxes. So if you're just, if you just got like some kind of a diagnosis, oh, you're transgender. Well, now here you are on this box. And now that we've put you in that box, we can just push you to the side. Ah, here you are. You've got depression. So uh, let me put you in this box and you're over here. You know, it, it doesn't really help. <laughs> it really doesn't help. Um, and so then, you know, it's easy as a Christian to say, hey, yeah, go get help. And it's like, okay, yeah, from where? Where am I going to get help from? So I, I wanted to put out this video just to kind of hopefully encourage you a little bit. Um, not being transgender myself, my help is going to be limited, but I hope it's at least a little bit encouraging. First off, and I think that this is something that is just completely overlooked, accept yourself. Accept yourself. I, I know it feel you, you just feel off. Maybe you don't feel like you look. Maybe, you know, whatever the situation. Maybe you've got physical, um, you know, Abnormalities, I don't know how to say that correctly. Uh, you know, partially developed parts or partially underdeveloped parts, whatever. Whatever that is, accept yourself. See, if you get if you get a sex surgery, a, a gender uh, reassignment surgery, you're not really accepting yourself. You're saying, I don't accept myself, so I'm going to cut on myself so that I'll accept myself. But here's here's the kicker. If you don't accept yourself now, a surgery is not going to fix anything. See, there is an, a really high suicide rate among transgender people. And transgender people who get sex surgeries still have an abnormally high suicide count or suicide rate. That's not good. That's not good at all. And I, I hope... I hope that – I really hope you don't give up. I mean, I, I don't know how else to say I, I really hope that you don't give up. Um, 
you know, you, you have worth. I, I, I know sometimes it's hard to believe that, but it's true. And, I mean, how do I know that? Because I know God. And God says you have value, so you have value. End of discussion. There is nothing in me that should say, hey, you are not valuable because you're you. That's, that's just not right. So the first thing, accept yourself. Uh, beyond either getting a surgery or not getting a surgery, beyond that, accept yourself. Because at the end of the day, you are you and you're stuck with you. <laughs> it, you, you can't run from your own shadow, you know? Um, sometimes we just try to push parts of us to the background, or sometimes we think, if I just do this, that will make me happy. But the truth is, things are more complicated than that. They, they just are. And if you don't learn to accept yourself for who you are... See what I'm saying? So... Anyways, the, the truth is, as, as much as it hurts, this struggle of trying to find yourself, it's something where others can't walk the path for you. I, I hope that you kind of understand what I'm saying. But uh, it's a process. Um, your burden will not last. This is just a, another little thing here. Um, especially uh, as Christians, we believe that um, in the resurrection we'll be given new new bodies. And we won't be plagued with the problems that we have now. See, now we can do things like feel uncomfortable in our bodies or maybe feel like we don't quite belong in our bodies. Maybe feel like things got messed up along the way. But the truth is that God made you special. And to, to steal a line from VeggieTales. And he loves you very much. And he made you you. And beyond, you know, um, physical problems or mental problems or, you know, whatever. God still made you as you are. And he still loves you as you are. And in the resurrection, if you, if you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, in the resurrection, you won't have to carry this burden anymore. You know, so all that discomfort, all that confusion, all that, the, the whole box, boxed package, it, it won't last. I don't know about you, but that's very encouraging to me. Uh, in Matthew 19, 11 through 12, Jesus talks about um, people who are called to be single. And I know that that sounds kind of difficult because we're told that happiness is found in sex and our culture is so obsessed with sex but the truth is is that sex isn't ultimate it's not it's not the way to happiness and as much as people hype it up it's just it's just not happiness is found in <clears throat> in seeking god and i know that sounds oh of course a christian's going to say that but but really but really um i actually did a test i i i did spent two years in the word reading the bible every single day you know, I was staying in prayer and stuff because if you read the Bible, you will pray. And if you pray, you will read the Bible. And, you know, doing this for two years. And then I, I wrote down how I felt, my thought process and everything. Then I took six months not reading the Bible at all. N no reading the Word. Even if I was at church and the pastor said, turn here, I wouldn't. I, I really wanted to know. And within six months, I noticed that my depression and anxiety got worse. That I didn't feel secure. I, I didn't feel like I have a purpose. I just got real restless feeling like I didn't belong anywhere, trying to trying to find something, you know, and it just wasn't there. And anyways, uh, but going back to Matthew 19, 11 through 12, um, you know, Jesus is talking about this, and he says that there are some people who are born as eunuchs and some people who are made eunuchs by people. And that just really stuck out to me. That, you know, beyond, beyond the ideal of how life should be in a hypothetical world, we are stuck in a fallen world. And, you know, we see the effects of it everywhere. I mean, there, there's war, there's, there's all kinds of problems, there's suicide, there's murder. I mean, all around us is brokenness, signs of, of, of a fallen world. And this is exactly what God said would happen in Genesis. He said, 
there's just death. That that's all that awaits you is death. And you know, then when, when we when we go our own way, that, that that's what faces us. So we live in a in this broken world, and because of that, sometimes we have we have illnesses, and sometimes we have sicknesses, and sometimes we have different things. I I have depression and anxiety, and I know somebody who had that, and they got saved and pff, gone, problems gone, and. I've struggled with it for a long time, and I was praying one time, and I clearly remember God saying, very, very clearly, I'm not going to take this away. You're going to live with this for the rest of your life. And that's a difficult thing to hear. But I still have hope in the midst of that problem. Because I know the Creator. I know that I'm on good terms with God. And... I know that whatever sickness, whatever problem I have in this world, it will only last till death. And then I've got eternity of no more problems. See, now, when you look at it like it's that, that's not so big of a deal. I mean, my third child died this year. Or, it's 2019 now. 2018. Died in 2018. And not the third child that died. I mean, I have two other kids, and it was my third uh, naturally born one, uh, and he died. And it's not, every day isn't another day further away. It's another day closer to seeing him. You know, it, it's not bad news, it's, it's good news. And it's the same thing with um, a mental issue such as a transgender. You, you only have to carry this weight, you know, until death. And then it's all a pill. <laughs> um, and, you know, the thing is, keep in mind the science behind it. Because I, I know it's very confusing, and I know people want you to believe their point of view. But if you just step back, and I know that's going to be hard to do because you're in the middle of the problem. But if you just step back and look at it, what does science show, show us? Science shows us that physically you are either this or you are either this. And I know that's hard because we don't feel like we fit into those two scientific definitions. But the truth is, in those boxes, or is there's a lot of sway in it. I mean, you can be a guy and like sewing, for instance. It's not. There's a lot of. In other words, if you're a man, you don't have to fit into that male model of perfect uh, man manliness, you know. Uh, so what we what we see by science and by psychology is we see a mental issue that needs to be addressed. Now, I know that the most comfortable and safest thing is to just run from it and to just not face it. But if you don't face it, you won't be able to get over it. And I know that there's this glimmer in you that thinks, maybe if I just get this exchange, but listen, if you don't accept yourself now, you won't then. You have to accept yourself rather than trying to change changing yourself. And so there's that. In Deuteronomy twenty two five it says about how um how men shouldn't wear uh women's clothes. But the point that I want to say from this is it never said that the things that you think or if you feel off that God will be mad at you or something. See, we all have our own different burdens. Some of us, you know, have money and we have to learn how to not let it own us. Some of us have depression and anxiety. Some of us have tra are transgender. Some of us are homosexual. We all have our own thing. Some of us have physical handicaps. We all have our own thing. And, excuse me, God doesn't judge us for being broken people. He judges what we do with it. He didn't say, if you don't have money, God doesn't expect you to be generous with your money. If you do have money, he does expect you to be generous with it. You see what I'm saying? He judges you according to what you have. 
I'm a musician. So if I didn't use my skills, that would be a bummer because, I mean, the world needs art and expression. But if you don't play guitar, God's not going to judge you for not playing guitar. See, it, it, it doesn't matter how we feel. It matters what we do with that feeling. You know, the same is true for homosexuality. I might feel an attraction for same sex, but I don't have to act on that attraction. I might be confused or maybe, I don't know, maybe I just don't really, maybe misled, whatever. But I don't have to act on that. I might be attracted to children, but I don't have to act on it. See, God judges us for what we do with our feelings. Let's say I'm married and I'm attracted to another woman I'm not, I'm not married to. God doesn't judge me for being attracted to somebody. He judges me for lusting. And then when lust keeps going, it turns into sin because I'm going to act on that. That's one of the things that makes pornography so dangerous. So I hope that this has been encouraging to you. You know, first off, accept yourself. Accept yourself. Accept yourself. Second, if you're a Christian, your burden won't last. And that's good news. Uh, third up, we are born with problems sometimes. And sometimes we, we make decisions in our past that, you know, haunt us. Either way, there's hope for the future. And uh, fourth, it's not about how we feel. It's about what we do with those feelings. So I hope that that's brought you some measure of encouragement today. And uh, 